Is creatine safe for seniors? Will it cause bloating and indigestion? Is it gonna damage my kidneys? What's the best type of creatine to take? How much do you need to take? Do you need to do a loading phase? Is it appropriate for women? Or maybe you're, you're thinking, is it worth the money? I've been asked a lot lately by clients of ours about creatine. And they're specifically clients over the age of 55, and they want to know, is this a safe and effective supplement for aging well? In today's video, we're gonna answer all of your questions and more. We're gonna talk about what creatine is, what the effects of creatine are in the body, the side effects of creatine, when to take it, how much to take, the right type to take. Plus, my wife Nicole is gonna be joining us later on in the video to talk about the specific benefits for women with aging and creatine. And I'm gonna share a bonus tip with you later on that you probably don't know about creatine. Hang on to your hat, this is gonna be a good one. So what is creatine? Well, creatine is a substance made from various amino acids. It's a naturally occurring substance that comes in foods like beef, pork, or fish. And it's something that you make within your body. In fact, right now, as you're sitting here watching this video, you're making creatine. In fact, we're, we're making creatine together. Now, whoa, 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 hold on. That's a, a little too much too soon, at least buy me dinner first. So creatine is a completely natural compound that's already occurring in your body and in many foods. However, it would take a full three pounds of beef to get the same amount of creatine as you can in one tiny little scoop. Whoa. Creatine powers your body in the first zero to 10 seconds of high intensity exercise. Think of something like lifting a grandkid up into the air, picking up a heavy bag of soil, deadlifting a heavy barbell, or catching yourself if, God forbid, you trip, fall, and need to react really quickly. That's how important this portion of exercise is, and creatine plays a crucial role in that process. You may already know that we generate energy using a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And when ATP is used, it loses one of its phosphates and it becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Creatine helps to recharge ADP molecules and turn them back into ATP molecules. It's kind of like a portable battery pack that goes with you and recharges your, your phone or whatever to help restore its energy so that it can continue to be used. Basically, creatine helps your muscles to perform harder, better, and longer, especially in the first 10 seconds or so of exercise. And supplementing with creatine can increase your body's natural stores of creatine by up to 30%. So what are the main benefits of creatine? Well, one of the most studied benefits of creatine is its impact on muscle and strength. There was a, a fantastic meta-analysis that looked at over 500 older adults, think like between the ages of 50 and 70. And what they found was that those who supplemented with creatine, like three or more grams per day, gained an average of three pounds more lean muscle mass than those who didn't use creatine while undergoing a resistance training program. So even if both groups were resistance training, the creatine group gained three pounds more muscle over the duration of the study. Also, unsurprisingly, they gained strength in their upper and lower body. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna share a bonus tip with you. Creatine helps boost brain health. There's some really interesting emerging research to show that creatine might help with the energetic processes that go on within our brains, and it may actually help to slow down cognitive impairment and decline. It can also support our mitochondria or our body's energy factories. These organelles are tightly linked with longevity, so anything we can do to give them an added boost is a great idea. Now let's talk about the side effects of taking creatine. Now, unfortunately with just one scoop, you will instantly develop an Austrian accent and begin saying, I'll be back. I'll be back. You know, every other sentence, you'll develop huge muscles and then later in life, you'll become 
the governor of California. No, all, all joking aside, you're not gonna instantly become a bodybuilder when you take creatine. Like the older adults in the study, they may gain a few pounds more muscle, but the side effects are really quite limited. In fact, there's two main side effects you should be concerned about. The first is weight gain. Creatine will help to pull water into your muscles, making them fuller, they look more firm, and helping them to perform better. Even though this is a side effect, it's also a benefit of creatine. So don't be surprised when you gain two to three pounds after a few months of taking creatine. I wanna say something really important. This is not fat, it's water weight. And this isn't the type of water weight that's gonna make you bloated or look puffy. This is water in its most productive form using it inside your muscles to power better muscular contractions. I'll say it again, this is not fat, it's water weight. Now, if you're somebody that plays a competitive sport where your weight is really important, you may wanna weigh the benefits of creatine with the potential downsides of added weight on the scale. The second potential side effect of creatine is digestive upset. We're gonna talk about the ideal type of creatine and how it can actually help you to avoid this. However, in general, no matter the type of creatine, digestive upset is actually quite rare for people taking creatine. And if you skip the loading phase, which I'll talk about later on, you can probably avoid this entire. One of the most common myths I hear about creatine is that it's bad for your kidneys. And there is not a shred of scientific evidence to show that creatine causes damage to the kidneys. Now, if you do have kidney disease or any other type of medical condition or taking medication, certainly consult with your personal physician to ask if creatine is right for you. So what is the best type of creatine? Now, if you go onto Google and type in creatine or walk into your local supplement store, you're gonna be met with a bevy of different options, not just different brands, but actually different types of creatine. You have buffered creatine, creatine hydrochloride, creatine gluconate, creatine monohydrate, on and on and on the list goes, each one more expensive than the next. But here's the truth. A 2020 study in the journal Nutrients compared many different types of creatine and they found something really surprising. All of them worked just about the same for boosting the body's natural stores of creatine. And thankfully, the cheapest form, creatine monohydrate, worked just as well as the others, and it's also been the one that's been researched the most and shown to be safe and effective. Now, the study showed that creatine monohydrate was about 19 cents per serving. The study was done in you know, 2022, and prices have gone up slightly since then. I think part of that is due to the popularity of creatine, and then also, you know, inflation, tariffs, on and on. And on. So pricing today is in the 30 to 60 cents per serving for a high quality creatine monohydrate. The creatine we use at home is from a company called Momentus, and it's their Crea Pure formula. It's a creatine monohydrate. If you get on their subscription, it's 33 cents per serving. And if you just buy it one time, it's more like 44 cents per serving. So right within the ballpark of what creatine monohydrate should cost. And it's super high quality. Momentus uses a proprietary style of creatine monohydrate called Creapure. And they use a water wash as opposed to an acid wash. So it's much easier on the stomach. People typically don't have digestive upset and it's free from heavy metals. If you're gonna be taking this stuff every day for the rest of your life, you certainly don't wanna be cramming yourself full of heavy metals. We're gonna put a link in the description to Momentus Creatine, the exact one that we recommend, so you can grab that. All right, let's talk about how much creatine to take, and let's clear up the confusion around that. Now, a research study done on swimmers found that two grams of creatine per day for six months or one gram of creatine per day for a year was not enough to elicit gains in strength or performance. However, research shows that in younger adults, like 20 to 30 somethings, three grams to five grams of creatine per day is sufficient to elicit strength gains. And supplementing with more than that is not additionally beneficial. However, older adults tend to need more protein and more creatine than younger adults to get the same effect. So I recommend using five grams per day as your metric. Now, thankfully, most creatines that I've come across have a five gram scooper already within the bottle. It's the little tiny scooper, and that's exactly how much you need to take daily. Now, you can technically do a loading phase. So this would be like doing 20 grams of creatine a day or five grams four times a day 
for about a week. This will help to saturate your muscles with creatine much quicker. However, one of the potential side effects is gastric upset, and it's just not necessary. You're gonna get the same amount of saturation over the course of a month uh, if you just do five grams a day, than if you do the loading phase and, you know, then do five grams a day. Now, as far as timing, it really doesn't matter when you take it, before your workout, after your workout, in morning or night. However, there is some research to show that taking it with carbs and protein can help with absorption. So we throw ours in our post-workout protein shake. And if you take it with caffeine, it may blunt the effects of creatine. So don't take it right at the same time as you're drinking your morning coffee if you can avoid it. So my experience with creatine, I've been taking creatine for a few months now. And one of the biggest things I've noticed is an increase in strength. My bench press was stuck at like 205 pounds for sets of five for months before creatine. And then I started supplementing five grams per day. And over the last couple months, my bench has gone up to 225. So about a 10% increase. Uh, and I haven't changed a whole lot. I haven't switched up how I bench press or my rep scheme or anything else. I've just done that. I've also gained about a pound and a half since starting to take creatine. And uh, that makes total sense to me because of the water weight gain. However, my, my wife tells me that I am looking leaner than I was a couple months ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I've been taking creatine for the last few months and I've noticed a tremendous difference, specifically in my squats and my lower body strength. Uh, before I was squatting in the 120s and I also had quite a bit of knee pain when I was squatting. And over the last few months, I've been able to increase my squat from the low 120s to about 147, and I don't have any more knee pain, even while lifting heavy. So that's been one of the biggest benefits I've noticed. And then also my upper body strength has improved. I was doing about 15 push-ups on the floor, um, and I was really struggling the last few. Um, and just a month ago at our, our staff training, I was able to do 30 floor push-ups. It was a struggle, but I have noticed a significant improvement in my strength since taking creatine. So of course, creatine is not magic. You still have to train hard, you have to lift heavy weights, you have to follow progressive overload, but it is an avenue to help you build strength and get more out of your workouts. Now let's talk about women and creatine and why it's so important for women to supplement with creatine. So first, researchers are now saying that creatine is seen as a conditionally essential nutrient. So while it's not completely essential, it is very vital for women, um, especially under immense stress, such as things like caring for aging parents, caring for grandkids, traveling, all of the things that we're juggling as women will lead to your body making less creatine, which is why it's especially important to supplement with it. So for women, supplementing with creatine can really help to fill the gap between what your body produces and what you actually need to perform optimally in your stage of life. Women only have about 70 to 80% of the creatine stores that men do. Coupled with that is the fact that women tend to eat less animal protein. So they're not getting as much creatine in their diet like men do. And so it's especially important for women as we age. This also means that we'll get a lot more benefit from supplementing with creatine. So women will actually see an increased boost in performance and cognitive health and in gut health from supplementing with creatine more than men would. Now let's talk about the benefits of creatine for women. So there's multiple benefits. The first benefit of creatine is cognition. So women, especially under immense stress, will see a huge benefit in recollection and their ability to handle multiple tasks and just in their focus and ability to be present in the moment. And let's face it, women are under a lot of cognitive stress. They are managing multiple schedules, they're taking care of grandkids, they're taking care of aging parents, and they're doing a lot in their day. And so it's really important to be alert and on top of it so that you can manage all of the stresses in your life well. The second benefit of creatine supplementation is bone health. So women are at a very high risk of getting osteoporosis, osteopenia as we age, and so it's really, really important to have strong bones. A 2019 meta-analysis found that women who did strength training and supplemented with creatine had much stronger bones than those who didn't supplement with creatine. Bone density is especially important in postmenopausal women. So it's not just about having strong muscles, but it's also about having strong bones. Strong bones are the framework for us to be able to live long, strong, and independent lives. The third benefit is strength and muscle. 
So the more muscle that we carry around, the stronger that we'll be and the more we're able to do the things that we want to do as we age. So it's not just about having big bulky muscles. It's about being strong and independent and being able to pick your grandkids up from the ground and put them in a car seat or being able to run around with your grandkids at the park and also just being able to walk around. So a lot of people will say as they age, they want to travel and they want to go do a bunch of things in retirement. And so we want you to be able to do that. And the best way to do that is to have strong muscles. Now let's talk about a couple of concerns that I've heard from women. One of the common concerns that I hear women say is, will creatine make me bulky? The answer is no, it will not make you bulky. In fact, it'll help you build strength, recover faster and build lean muscle, especially when you pair it with lifting weights and eating enough protein. The other concern I hear from women is, will creatine make me bloated? And the answer is no, especially if you're using a pure form of creatine like CreaPure. The other thing that you can do when you're starting to supplement with creatine is to slowly increase your dosage. So the first week you can take two grams a day, the second week you could take three, the third week you could take four, and then the fourth week you could go up to the five grams a day, which is what I would recommend for women. The way that I like to take my creatine is after my workouts in the morning, I usually get a cup of whole milk I add a scoop of protein powder and a scoop of creatine, and I try to take that every day after my workouts in the morning. Thanks for that, Nicole. So the final verdict on creatine, is it safe? Yes. Is it effective? Yes, especially when paired with resistance training for building muscle. Should you take it? Well, if your goal is to stay independent and strong as you age and live life on your terms, yeah, I think so. I think it's a cost-effective and worthwhile supplement to add into your routine. Creatine isn't just for bodybuilders or elite athletes anymore. It's for you, the person over the age of 55 who wants to be strong and independent and live life on your terms as you age. If you want more content like this where we talk about how to be strong and healthy as you age, like and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm Dr. Matt. Thanks, Nicole.